What's up guys, welcome to another exciting color grading tutorial and today we're going to be looking at GH5 footage that was shot by Luke Newman Films. And in today's lesson I'm going to do a couple different clips, we're going to do part 1 and part 2 and we're going to take a look at how much we can color grade this footage and see if it looks pleasant for film look and other sorts of stuff. I'm going to be mainly aiming this color grading at giving more cinematic look rather than just simple because simple color correction let's say for projects like corporate videos and other kind of clean stuff is very simple most of the modern cameras can do that but we're going to find out how much GH5 can actually push it in terms of cinematography and actual cinema look. So let's get started. The first clip I'm going to be working on is right over here, it was shot handheld obviously. And the first note I'm going to do is noise reduction as my usual workflow goes. And a lot of people have been asking me why I always do noise reduction in the first note rather than the last note. In one of these days I'm actually going to do a Q&A video especially for you guys question. And to answer it simply. You should always do noise reduction on the first note to work in a more cleaner footage down the line. Because for example, if you're going to be working with the secondaries, it's way easier to grab a color when you have a cleaner footage rather than, you know, dirty with a chroma noise and all that, because it all affects the quality of the key down the line. So let's get started. First note, I can see a little bit in the blacks some noise. I'm gonna plug in my favorite numbers 2 and 10 and the reason why I like those numbers so much because in my opinion these are the most optimal numbers to plug in before your computer actually start using a lot of resources. So think of it as a very lightweight noise reduction. So let's check it out before and after. Okay the noise reduction did a pretty good job. Okay, let's go back to the full screen and the next note I'm going to do is going to be LUT. I'm going to be using 2383 film LUT that comes standard with DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to call this LUT. Okay, and the new note I'm going to do it's going to be exposure. I'm going to adjust exposure in the separate note just like that and I'm gonna bring highlights a little bit more down so let's check it out before and after beautiful another note is going to be saturation in my personal workflow I like to keep every action that I do in the separate note that way you have down the line essentially more control over what you do for example if I wanna change something in exposure I don't have to be touching the saturation or any other action I would do if it all would be in one note. So it, it, it's better down the line like this. <clears throat> it may seem a little bit overwhelming when I have a lot of nodes on the screen, but trust me, it's not that bad. So saturation, I'm going to increase individually per channel, just like that. Okay, and we can start seeing, we start getting a very, very nice result. Footage start looking very cinematic. So let's check it out again before and after before and after looks really good so I'm going to create a parallel mixer now and we're gonna start working on the look okay and in this look let's see what we can do in this look I'm gonna be working with the curves okay so I'm gonna give it a little bit more warmth and in the green just a little bit just like that and then the red just like this just a, just a tiny little bit okay so let's check it out before and after before and after very slight difference but that's what color grading is all about color grading is not about making something really crazy super saturated that looks completely awkward so next I'm gonna call this green okay and I'm gonna go hue versus hue and I'm gonna grab a little bit of green just like this let's see yep we're working with the greens perfect 
make it a little bit wider that way we feathering a little bit more that way our roll off are more accurate okay and i'm going to make it a little bit more like this so check it out before and after okay i really like that now another note i'm gonna do i'm gonna call this one jacket okay and i'm gonna grab a little bit of blue or whatever this color is okay perfect uh, not too accurate let's try again let's see okay let me manually sometimes the color picker doesn't really accurately grabs the color anyways okay let's work with that so I'm gonna make it a little bit wider just like that and we can see how it changes the color let me zoom in if we go like that we see how because of the compression we're not necessarily taking all the colors of that spectrum let's try to make it a little bit more wider and see if that's going to help nope still not helping so that is not going to be our perfect route so i'm going to delete this note i'm going to create a new note again and i'm going to do color selection with a qualifier okay i'm going to click it just like this and let's try to soften the clip a little bit okay like that looks great saturation we keep it like that Okay, just like this let's see we'll make this one softer okay like that is good okay we can see how the compression makes the blocks in the image but we're gonna try to work around it let's see okay like that looks decent enough and let me introduce a little bit more white okay let's try working with it like this and see how our result gonna look so what I want to do I want to give it a slightly different blue color let's see just like that okay maybe that's a little bit too extreme so something something like that let's go to the vector scope and in the vector scope we can actually see as I'm dragging exactly what we're doing okay so let's do a classic split okay just like this and maybe a little bit less saturation so let's check it out before and after before and after that actually looks like a very good key relatively again we can see a little bit of spill but just for the sake of tutorial I think it's okay it's gonna work and let me remove a little bit more saturation so that looks great we're gonna call this <clears throat> jacket okay let's see the whole clip definitely stands out okay let's see before and after before and after and the last note i'm gonna do i'm gonna call this pop okay and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use the curve just a regular curve to kind of give it a little bit more pop in the whole image so probably keep it like this so tiny tiny a little bit like that okay let's check it out let's see before and after before and after the footage looks really really clean like that okay let's see that pop see before and after before and after it definitely brought a lot more details and finally 
I personally not a big fan of doing this inside the Vinci Resolve, but we can sharpen the image before the delivery. If I'm gonna zoom in over here, and by the way, the image is very, very sharp to begin with, so it looks very, very nice. Okay, so we're gonna do like that. Like that looks kind of crazy, but then we're gonna go in the key and we're gonna dial it down by half. And let's check it out before and after. Before and after. And that looks very, very nice. So let's see. Let's play this clip. Looks really good. So let's check it out again. Before and after. All right, looks good. We're going to continue right now with the second clip. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of the color grading from a GH5. Stay tuned.